a lot has changed in the last couple of years, so I wanted to give you an updated cost of living comparison of California to Texas. Hello, my name is Dana Pollard and I'm a real estate agent in Texas, specifically the Dallas-Fort Worth area, but we do have fantastic referral agents in Houston, Austin, and San Antonio that specifically work with our team. So let me know if you're looking to buy a home, fill out my dream home questionnaire in the link below. And if you're looking to sell a home, fill out the sell my home questionnaire in the link below. So I was in San Diego just a couple of months ago and guys, it really is beautiful there. And so I can understand some of your concerns of, of wanting to leave or move from California to Texas because it is gorgeous. Now it was, guys, it was a bit on the chilly side in San Diego. Uh, it kind of reminded me of Dallas, to be honest, but um, I know that there are other parts that's a little warmer. So, and I know that it doesn't get super cold, so I will give you that. But anyway, <laughs> I, was, I, I guess I was shocked that it was so chilly in the mornings. But I did get to go visit the grocery stores, take a look at the prices, compare them to the Dallas-Fort Worth prices. And guys, this does fluctuate, of course, but these prices were taken at the same time. And I know gas fluctuates as well, so, you know. That's just kind of how it works. But this should at least give you an idea of the cost of living between California and Texas. All families have to pay for groceries, so we thought it would be interesting to take a look at the cost comparison from California and Texas, like kind of similar grocery stores. Let's start with a gallon of whole milk in Texas. We're in San Diego going into Vaughn's grocery store. I just want to compare prices for San Diego versus Texas. I don't know if I've ever been to a grocery store with a parking garage and an escalator. Now in San Diego, that price is $4.19 and that's a difference of 70 cents. So how about eggs? Well, let's go in for 18 in a carton. And in California, it's $4.99. Okay, so it's $3.95 in Texas, and that's a difference of $1.04. Now listen, uh, while we're on, you know, just a few cents difference, uh, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but as you add up items, it could easily be $100, $200 more per grocery visit, depending on how many people are in your family and how well you like to feed them. Uh, but they do add up, even though it's just, you know, a dollar here, a dollar there. So let's check another staple, and that's bread. My two favorite breads. Dave's Killer Bread and four wheat, 12 grain, 3.49, and Dave's is 6.49. In California, 12 grain is $3.99, and Dave's Killer Bread is $6.99, so that's about 50 cents cheaper here in Texas. So man cannot live off bread alone, and or woman for that matter. But here in Texas, we love our meat. And so let's let's go in, take a look at a ground one pound of ground beef. In California, a pound of 93.7 is $7.99. There you go, another dollar difference. Another thing I noticed in this grocery store is that the Tide Pods were locked up in California and I'd never seen that before. Sure, sometimes, you know, we'll see certain items locked up, but I just never seen Tide Pods locked up. 
Now I do know that there was a Tide Pod challenge way back in 2018, so maybe I'll have to research that a little bit more. I can just grab it. <laughs> now of course gas prices have gone up, you know, all across the country for in light of recent events, um, but on average, California prices of gas are about a dollar fifty more per gallon than here in Texas. So in Texas, gas was three dollars and eighty six a gallon on that same day that I took a picture here. Now, of course, all these things add up over time. So if it's fifty cents here, a dollar here, maybe a couple bucks here, then obviously the grocery bill is going to be that much more in California than Texas. Now you have to bring all those groceries home somewhere, right? So let's take a look at the median home price, what you can get in California and what you can get here in Texas. The median home price in San Diego is $891,000 and for the Dallas-Fort Worth area, it's $345,000. So here I am on Zillow and I'm just pulling it up, okay? I've not pre-done the work on this. So I'm clicking houses and seeing what we can get. Now, of course, I know that the closer you are to the beach, the more expensive the houses get. Let's do $699. Okay, so this is a house at $699, four bedrooms, two bath, which is great. It's 1,116 square feet. That's really cute. Very cute. I like it stage very nicely if you need an agent to sell your home i know agents that stage very nice whoa guys that is so little <laughs> oh my gosh i guess that's why it's 1116 square feet it's so cute but are you kidding me? $700,000. Don't get me wrong, it's super cute. But guys, wow. Just wow. Let's, let's pull up, um, let's say Keller because Keller's a very nice uh, family-oriented area. Let's pull Keller up, okay? Wow. Same price point, <laughs> not a whole lot available. Uh, let's look for a $6.99, see what we can get. Well, there's new. I don't want to talk about the new construction. Let's just click on um, right here. This one's $6.40. It's cute. Needs a little bit of updating, but still very nice. But look at the square footage. Hold on. All right. Um, let's click on this one. Seven twenty-five is twenty-five thousand dollars more. It's a four-bedroom, four-bath, thirty-six hundred square feet. Very nice. Cute. Look how big. Oh, look at this. I love the tall ceilings. Many people want tall ceilings here. Wood floors, beautiful staircase. Very nice floor plan. Okay, so the kitchen, they don't have the white cabinets, but that's really not a big deal. If you really want the white cabinets, you could have them painted. Um, Built-ins. Very nice. Let's see. Ooh, what a great bedroom. Large bathroom. So you get my point. You get a game room. You get all kinds of a media room. That's very popular here, by the way, to have a media room. Oh, this one has a pool, guys. Look at that. You get a pool. It's not a super big pool, but it's a pool. Very nice neighborhood. Look at the home surrounding it. Very nice. Very, very nice. I just wanted to click on this one, 788. Okay, that one's nice. 
updated, cute. This is on a more narrow lot. It's really cute though. So anyway, you can kind of get the idea of the difference in price point of a, say, a $700,000 home in San Diego, not even close to the beach, not, not too far, but you know, and a $700,000 home in Keller, Texas, which is a very nice city. So let's now talk about utilities. So first, let's take a look at electricity and the average price per kilowatt in the US is $13.31 per kilowatt hour. And if we compare that with California's average price per kilowatt hour, that would be $19.90 according to electricchoice.com. Now there is a great demand in California for electricity as environmental groups are pushing away from natural gas options. And the state passed legislation requiring 100% clean energy by 2045. So there's probably no price relief there anytime soon. Now in general, the price in Texas per kilowatt hour is $11.36. And electricity in Texas here is deregulated. And what that means is that we can choose any electric provider that we want. And so when someone moves here to Texas, they go, what electric company should I choose? Because I feel overwhelmed by how many electric companies there are for them to choose from. Now I can say there are some select certain areas that, uh, a resident would have to use a co-op, uh, but if you're not in a co-op, those are generally low prices anyway. I'm in a co-op. But other than that, you get to choose your electric provider, which keeps it competitive. And when it comes to electricity, it, guys, it's going to vary depending on how old the home is, how well insulated it is, what kind of windows, have the windows been replaced? Uh, we live in a home that was built in 2020, and so our electricity is very low. On the high end, we spent $286.30, and on the low end, $77.51. And so in the, in the summer, the AC is pumping, and in the winter, we use gas for the heating. Now our, our gas bill is not fair. Uh, I would say on average it goes anywhere from 120 to 250 a month for similar homes like mine in a newer neighborhood for in the winter, but somehow there's a glitch on my home and we only pay $18 a month for gas, so <laughs> it's crazy. So don't tell the gas company. I don't know, we pay it every month, but it's, the other thing that we didn't talk about is water. Our average cost of water is about $120 a month. That's when we, we are watering our yards a couple times a week during the summer. I have seen it as high as uh, 150 and typically I go, what's going on? Now, if you have a pool then, or you have a larger yard, then by all means, you know, your utility bills will go up accordingly. Or if you have a very large family. We have four at home, four people. Our oldest is off at college, so that can make a difference as well. Now, one thing that can make a big difference for you is if you live in California or any other state that has low property taxes, but high income taxes, you want to compare the difference, okay? And with the cost of living going up and housing going up, it's definitely something you want to consider. I did do a video on this, um, but things are, you know, creeping up there in purchase price right now. So just take a look at what your state income tax is for your job versus property taxes here in Texas because they can be high. Now, if you're outside of city limits, I've seen them as low as 1.92 percent uh, and I've seen them as high as 3.2 percent on property taxes per year so definitely check that out. Now I can't I like for you to average 2.8 percent whenever you are purchasing a property it could be higher it could be lower many are at 2.5 percent but just to be on the safe side calculate about 2.8 percent in property taxes when you are uh, 
applying for a mortgage or purchasing a home. Now listen, I know that sounds very scary to many of you out of state. Um, here in Texas, uh, we do like to keep our property tax low if possible, uh, but it's kind of just part of what we do here. I mean, I just, growing up here, I just thought it was normal. When you buy a home, you pay high taxes. Uh, but we don't have income tax and that's it's beautiful. I love it. So some of you guys will love it and some of you will hate it depending on home purchase price, incomes, etc. Put in the comments your thoughts about property taxes uh, compared to not paying state. Yep, high property taxes here, not paying state income tax uh, versus, you know, other states. Now, Washington, you don't have either. And I know there's a few states that have low property tax as well as no state income tax. Now, I do want to say if you are moving to Texas and you live in California, may, you may want to reserve your U-Haul way ahead of time because there are more going outbound than inbound. Um, <laughs> that's what I read somewhere. And last but not least, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, salaries. So I always hear the comment, but Dana, the salaries are higher here in California. And many times they are. Many times they're not. Many times you get to move uh, from California to Texas and you get the same salary. So it really just depends on your position, the industry, and whether you are taking a price cut, you know, an income cut, not price, but an income cut when moving from California to Texas. So just do your research because not everyone has taken a price cut when it comes to their income. So do consider that though.